Welcome everyone to our October PL Andres All Hands. We have a busy agenda for the day. We're going to have some quick working group updates with uh, highlights from each project on KPIs and other exciting updates. We have a whole chunk of spotlights, so please remember to go quickly from many different teams. So excited to highlight some of the new improvements there. And then uh, hopefully we have time for a short deep dive on PhilDev Summits um, and would love to also get some, some comments from folks in the chat on their biggest takeaways, since I know a lot of people in this working group were um, there in person and have some of their own reflections and are writing up their own synthesis. So uh, we'll maybe popcorn out a little bit at that point and then jump into Q&A. So that is our agenda. Um, as a reminder, if you're new here, um, the PL Endres Working Group is a collection of phenomenal humans uh, working across the Protocol Labs network, um, where we believe strongly that um, building a strong internet built on uh, core content addressing primitives um, can be a huge enabler for human agency and can make sure that the fundamental computing breakthroughs of the future are built on awesome uh, you know, internet infrastructure foundations that make them more open, more accessible, more enabling of human agency. Um, and there's a lot of those exciting breakthroughs we want to help make happen as well. Um, we want to do them uh, you know, in a way that's aligned with uh, humanity's best interests. Uh, a lot of the work we've done so, par so far is focused on some of these uh, kind of core computing breakthrough protocols, IPFS, LibP2P, and Filecoin. But there's many others, and we get to work across a lot of really awesome uh, technology here. And I'm excited to welcome more folks into our fold in the future as well. Um, here's our high-level mission. Uh, scale and unlock new breakthroughs, IPFS, Falcon, LibP2B, and related protocols, um, both by driving protocol utility and capability, um, scaling network native research, and stewarding and growing open source projects, networks, and communities. Um, uh, a first quick mini celebration. Uh, we officially passed the third birthday for the Falcon main network. Um, I considered making everyone here sing happy birthday to Filecoin all at once, but uh, that is traumatic and we don't need to experience that all together. So you can just sing it in your head. Um, I, it's a pretty exciting milestone, which we crossed on uh, Sunday and uh, uh, marks a, a whole new year of growth. Uh, Filecoin is going to start learning to ride a tricycle and feed itself and tie its shoelaces and all sorts of exciting things this coming year. So uh, congratulations and happy birthday, Filecoin. Um, as a reminder, here are some of the awesome teams that make up the PL Endres working group, um, from you know stewarding IPFS to working on um, things like Filecoin and FVM, um, to really critical uh, skill sets around crypto economics and um, building compute networks. Um, our strategy for 2023, it remains unchanged. We're only going to get to flash this up in front of you a couple more times before we start focusing on 2024. Um, but four main components, uh, making sure that we keep critical systems well stewarded and growing, um, helping grow teams and networks across the PL network um, and the many protocols um, that are building within it, making sure we have robust storage and retrieval across IPFS and Filecoin, and that we are bringing new exciting projects related to compute over Filecoin state and data into these networks and helping kind of scale our overall kind of blockchain capabilities to support many different, um, you know, both uh, builders who are uh, harnessing state programmability and um, L2s as well. Uh, here is uh, our progress here. We have two exciting things that are in pretty, pretty good motion related motion. Uh, but, I'm sh but Project Motion, I think, is uh, officially in alpha, moving towards beta as we push into lab week. Um, and NV21 just did their calibration net upgrade earlier today as it um, pushes towards uh, main net upgrade uh, later in November. Um, probably a lot of these could actually be turned green because at this point we are deep in Q4 and uh, a lot of teams have exciting uh, launches planned for lab week. Uh, but we are making a, a special progress on those two. And I'll hand off to each of the leads to give a quick update as we look back on our Q3 OKRs, and then we'll flash our Q4 OKRs in front of you as well. Go ahead, Lauren. Uh, thanks, Molly. We had a strong showing on the keeping critical systems running, growing, releasing, scaling, and secure um, OKR. You can see all of those went green. There are now error messages when you go to IPFS and put IPFS.io and put in a bad SID. Um, check that out. We have made progress on FIPS for the Filecoin economy. We now have five community bootstrap nodes running and met all the goals on Filecoin chain robustness. Steve, go ahead. 
Yeah, so for hyperscaling accelerating talents teams and contributions to the PL stack, uh, the crypto econ uh, lab closed one additional paying comment. So this was a client. This wasn't fully met, uh, which was DRAND, and but they did uh, successfully run crypto econ day at zero cost. Um, in terms of uh, the, the DRAND items, it's explicitly they they nailed it, um, having landed two customers, uh, and so again, congrats to them. And on the Helia side, we talked about this one last work, but we or last time, but we did pivot away from the authoring side to focus on retrievability. Um, but even in that uh, process, I've found that there are not infra providers that are enabling pinning from the browser. And so it's certainly speaking to the need to specify an HTTP onboarding story with an IPFS ecosystem. So that's work to come in 2024, but that's why that one wasn't met. I'm passing it over. Thanks. I'll be taking over from Matthew today um, on the scale data onboarding and CDN speed retrievals to drive super linear adoption and lighthouse users. Um, as Molly mentioned, Project Motion is now in alpha and is now called the DStore REST API for Filecoin. So we will have the beta launch at Lab Week, and I encourage people to check it out. It's meant to be an easy way to integrate Filecoin to store um, and retrieve and track your data. Um, on the unsealing side, for <laughs> unsealing for retrieval works. Um, I'm very happy to say that the unsealing fixes are in 1.23.4 release train of Lotus. So you should have a bug-free, scalable unsealing experience. Um, on the redundant window post, it's still a work in progress. So we expect that out for testing in the next few weeks. Um, for Saturn serving 100% of IPFS, IPFS IO gateway traffic, that was um, shifted a bit due to different priority switches. Um, the Saturn team continues to focus on un onboarding external private beta customers beginning in lab week, and there's document-specific acceptance criteria for the, the future IPFS IO gateway transition, so that will be something upcoming. On the dot .storage onboarding 100% of historic updates, uploads to the W3 app and Filecoin deal in time to do <laughs> time right less than 72 hours via spade integration, the uh, data pipeline implement implementation is being finalized and in good shape. Um, the historic upload, upload migration will begin in early, early November and should take about two weeks to complete. And right now, the time to from deal to um, onboarding on Filecoin via Spade is about 33 hours. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I will try to keep it short, but there, there has been a lot going on on the, on the side of upgrading Filecoin with uh, new L2 capable design computer with data. So on FEM land, we, reach, like we, we met our OKRs that was set. Uh, very exciting. I think you all heard last time too. Uh, we closed the quarter. Uh, I think as of now, FVM reached 27 million fill TVL. That put us on top 30, uh, over 600,000, 630,000 wallets, more than 2,000 new contracts and, uh, and one aggregator currently. And on the platform side, we um, we achieved the foundational changes that we, that we planned for VASM actor readiness. Uh, that is uh, that uh, as well as in addition to making the um, improving some of the security uh, parts of the platform. Uh, on the IPC side, um, you will see it's orange, but we slow down this quarter to go faster in Q4 and uh, Q1. Uh, so we already offloaded some of the U U UX and DX related needs from M3 to M2.5, which delayed the M2.5, which is why uh, it's orange. However, we are still on track and super excited for Q1 uh, big launch. And we are launching M2.5 in Love Week, uh, which is very exciting. And lastly, we are on track to have full launch uh, customers, Spark, Lilipad, Fluence, and Tableland. Uh, on the cloud side, uh, this is again orange uh, because of an explicit decision that was made in quarter to change the quarterly goals. Uh, we were able to launch the new version of the testnet uh, with multiple modules at Filecoin thing in Iceland, uh, 95 clients, 54 deals, um, still prioritizing Go-based testnet, live nodes still uh, pending. Uh, and we had our open hack with 21 submissions uh, and continue to making the progress on the business plan, big bets and external meeting site. Um, thank you guys all. Um, and thanks everyone for the, the awesome contribution toward these, these goals. Um, it's great that we are, <laughs> absolutely prioritizing critical system security 1.0, um, making some awesome progress around new L2 capabilities, um, and then continuing to, um, to make progress also on growing teams and scaling data onboarding. Looking forward to Q4, again, our, our high level objectives stay the same um, as they will through the end of the year, um, but 
shall we go around the, the horn again, introducing some of the, the new focus areas for, for next quarter? Lauren, I think that would be starting with you on uh, critical systems. Yes, so on the keeping critical systems running, we are shipping NV21 with synthetic pro wrap movable partitions um, and three and a half year deals. On the IPF as a gateway side, um, we're going to be enforcing rate limits and we'll have a product landing page to set user expectations and answer FAQs. And then for critical stewardships, stewardships we have IPFS, low PDP, and DRAND will be maintaining services um, through nucleation. Great. Yeah, a few call outs regarding growth and acceleration of talent and teams. One is this you know, uh, term of nucleation, right? The current Indres, IPFS, and LibPDP teams, which again, to be clear, are not the IPFS or LibPDP teams, but the ones that are housed here within Indres, um, they are going to be moving out into the Protocol Labs network, uh, and there will also be corresponding project foundations. Uh, so a, a key thing is actually landing that this quarter and getting some verbally committed funding beyond funding that Protocol Labs will be uh, providing uh, to hit, hit runway um, in 2024. So that's that's key item. And again, also the part of this is of opening it up outside of PL is that uh, that there's public commons funding for uh, you know just beyond these specific teams, but the projects as a whole. And so getting those structures and comms, et cetera, all set up is is key. And in terms of get a community gathering point, IPFS camp, you know, got deferred from earlier this year. We want to get that announced and uh, fully uh, committed for spring of 2024. So on the scaling data onboarding, um, for the data onboarding side, we will be shipping the data of the DStore REST API um, by lab week, as I mentioned. On the Lotus Miner side, we will follow up and ship sturdy post for high ability window post proofs. This will make SPs um, more confident in their ability to prove daily. On the station Meridian side, we'll be shipping Filecoin Spark retrieval monitoring um, and a station beta. For the IPFS websites, we'll be measuring and improving performance for the websites that published IPFS in both Cuba, Kubo and Helia. And for Saturn, we plan to onboard five to 10 customers to the Saturn CDN private beta. And lastly, on upgrading the file equipment new L2 capabilities and compute over data, starting at compute over data, uh, launched the Lilliped public incentivized testnet, aiming to achieve 10% of Golem scaling compute resources and compute user job adoption. If we have new capabilities, we will continue with some of the foundational changes and we'll, we will make FVM customizable based on IPC needs. That's going to enable adding new, new features for IPC subnets, in addition to making FVM Falcon agnostic. And this is also going to unlock more IPC subnets and IPC users' use cases. On the FVM adoption side, we set really ambitious goals since we over exceeded our prior quarter. So this time, 50 million. Fill uh, total value locked up 20 DeFi Lama, 25 million fill deposits, 3,000 storage deals done through FVM, uh, 2.5 thousand unique smart contracts, 200 teams building on FVM, and more than one on chain, or at least one more on chain aggregator. And this, these are the goals. So hopefully, we will have a very strong year end uh, on FVM side. And with IPC, uh, deploying a public fundament based subnet anchored on Filecoin with three proof of concept launch partners running subnets on IPC. Awesome, that is a big Q4. Um, and so luckily we have Lab Week in here to, to uh, land a lot of these launches around, but um, you know, we set ourselves uh, lofty goals and let's go go forth and, and deliver some, some awesome improvements. Uh, pretty excited to hear all of this. Um, with that, handing it off to IPFS for project update. Cool. I'll take this one. Thanks all. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about IPFS, where we're making the web work peer-to-peer -peer with content addressing, so content can be verified independent of the provider or transport method. Into some of our KPIs, not a lot of callouts want to make here. Uh, obviously, there are some dips that we sometimes see regarding uh, nodes in the amino DHT. We are in contact with one of the large node providers, and we do see uh, changes from them from time to time, but you know, no more action being taken at the moment. Also, some of our graphs, you see uh, some uh, latency increase. Um, but this, when you look at the daily trends, that has gone back down, which is that tiny graph in the top right. Um, but otherwise, no major call-outs there. Again, hit that uh, QR code if you want to dive deeper into these KPIs, and particularly the ProBlab.io uh, website. In terms of some IPFS project updates, there's been some useful posts on the blog recently. One is that there is now IPFS URL support in curl. 
it's been a long time coming and great to see that landed in a important CLI like Curl. Uh, Brave is continuing to be investing in their IPFS integration with new the new IPFS info bar. And we talked about it last time, but the Amino DHT uh, naming and refactoring of the Go DHT implementation that has had a formal post post that pushed out as well. Uh, on the Helia front, which is a JavaScript implementation uh, for IPFS, um, it's really been focusing on having more reliable retrieval and it will fall back to trustless HTTP gateways uh, like IPFS.io, um, but still verifying the content. You can start trying that out today with that next tag and they're continuing to do an inventory of their users and consumers on um, that in their third monthly project report. Kubo 023 did ship, uh, which includes self-hosting for the routing v1 endpoint, which captures your uh, delegated routing needs on the read side, uh, and a few other uh, improvements as well that we, we've discussed, including experimental um, support for libp2p with HTTP, um, exposing the trustless gateway uh, API. But the exciting stuff is about what's coming. Uh, IPFS Connect, it's happening in Istanbul um, during Lab Week and Dev Connect on Thursday, November 16th. Many of the implementers from this team will be there and we look forward to um, you know, sharing information and connecting with folks there. Uh, continuing to pound the drum on reliable retrieval from the browser. One big thing is getting uh, continuous measurement running of showing reliability improvements and doing that in partnership with ProBlab. And uh, we're also setting up some new endpoints that will get announced that allow for someone to do just trustless gateway requests or delegated routing requests that are independent of the IPFS.io domain. That way you can, even if uh, IPFS.io itself gets targeted or tarnished in any way, you can still use these other um, endpoints for those use cases. The IPFS.io gateway will be getting a proper public utility landing page and we'll be continuing to do various efforts to reduce the, uh, the cost of that fleet by um, also introducing request throttling. So more to come there and that'll be shared with the community. The gateway conformance test suite has been a big investment this year. We'll actually have a dashboard to be able to show how various implementations and gateway instances uh, are performing with that conformance. The big news though is about IPFS taking its next growth step to set up an independent protocol foundation and for the IPFS engineering and ecosystem teams that are currently housed under PLGo to become independent teams from PLGo. IPFS is still a big part of the PL network and has a lot of teams working on it. IPFS is not moving out of the PL network. It's just the PL Andres or PLGo IPFS specific teams that are becoming independent of PLGo. So PL Inc. will be one of the funding sources, but it's expected that the Andres IPFS team creates additional um, funding uh, sources that are more representative of the users that they serve, and that is the team's current focus right now. We're first looking at collecting donations, but we expect to also offer various paid contractable services. If you're interested in supporting or learning more, please do reach out. We'll otherwise be getting more information soon on the IPFS blog and when it's ready at ipfs.fyi slash ipfs 2024 Thanks a lot. All right, over to you, Dave. Thank you, Molly. So uh, Lib P2P, our mission is to create a modular and performant P2P networking stack that is a good choice in every computing environment, including browsers. And I'm emphasizing that because more on that in a moment. So um, in the interest of transparency, we typically show these graphs about uh, performance in our community and things like that. The only thing I really want to highlight here is in the upper right-hand corner, we continue to see solid growth in all meaningful contributions across all the implementations of libp2p so this is really good news libp2p is definitely growing all right so on to kind of uh project highlights there's not a lot on this slide but um there's really important things that i just want to point out here so uh, we've added hole punching to the interop test which has um bear born like repeated healthy fruit in the in terms of getting other implementations and knowing which ones are incompatible and finding all kinds of bugs. So um, this is a great improvement for our interop. And we can we we're hoping to see uh, a continued steady stream of improvements um, across many different implementations. Um, over the last uh, month or so, we had a JS Lib P2P Colo in, in New York City for doing a lot of um, coordination with teams, downstream teams that use JS Lib P2P, including uh, projects like the Helia project. Um, we're currently in the process of, of preparing for Lib P2P Day at Lab Week in Istanbul next month. Um, that link there takes you to the sign-up page. I encourage everybody to register. It's going to be a great day of, of talks and, and getting to know each other. 
And uh, we just closed out the open data hack uh, contest. And the winner here is drawp2p.xyz, which is a collaborative drawing tool that operates entirely in the browser. And all of the networking is handled by libp2p and is capable of doing peer-to-peer -peer direct from browser to browser. So that's what the screenshot is there. Um, what we've got coming up in the short term here, we uh, work continues on the WebRTC private to private, which means browsers going from directly from browser to browser um, using hole punching. And this is a key feature for enabling Helia Golden Path. For those of you not familiar, the Golden Path is allowing browsers to fetch IPFS data reliably from any Kubo node serving data native in the browser, any browser. So this is a huge, huge improvement in the browser story and the connectivity story um, for all uh, users of the P2P. And we're also working on Autonet V2 um, to help out with more um, discovery of network location and hole punching and all that kind of stuff. On the implementation side, we just have a number of releases coming up. You can click into those if you wanna dig into the details. Um, and that's it, I hand it back to you, Molly. Over to Falcon, folks. Thank you. Um, Falcon, we were trying to build a crypto backed, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> create a decentralized, efficient, robust foundation for humanities information. Quickly, next slide. Uh, in Field Dev Summit, we have a refreshment from Juan on what um, Falcon's vision is, and as a and also clarify what humanities information really is. It's about the unit of all the data that exists in the world. And we do hope Falcon is one of the storage a solution that people will be storing those data on top of so we can do more computation of. But like I would definitely recommend to watch this talk uh, from the Field Dev Summit if you haven't already. Um, next slide. And quickly, on the storage network we are building so far, uh, we still are over 10 exabytes of like robot power storage capacity in the network. And 1.57 exabytes of that is filled with data stored in the Falcon network, which is really cool. And yes, keep going. Um, next slide. And as many of Everyone here knows that we ship FEM, bring user programmability into Filecoin earlier this year. And by far, we have over 2,000 unique smart contract developed uh, here. And we, I think we just passed Uniswap uh, integration as well. Like I think the vote just passed like last week. And it's a huge win for the Filecoin ecosystem. You can now, you know, building all those uh, use cases across network using using over uh, the, uh, the field. And also there are over 10 million of field is being managed and deposited oh, by the user contract deployed on Falcoin. Next slide. Uh, quickly, some highlights. So happy birthday, Falcoin. It's like three years. We're already seeing all the happy birthday song there. And again, Mikhail, if you want to stop me and sing that lively, I will you know pause for you. But if not, happy birthday, Falcoin. And um, it's been great work. And uh, we are working on shipping NV21 to celebrate this milestone. So a calibration upgrade literally the code name is like watermelon because it's gonna be it's juicy and the calibration literally upgraded like about five hours ago uh successfully we do find a small bug um potentially in one of the features we introduced but uh, uh we are patching that thanks to the lotus tse teams for capturing that so quickly and we're working with venus uh team across the world with 12 hour difference to actually figure out what the bug is and patch on that uh, so that's ongoing, and the mainnet upgrade is happening on November the 28th uh, with all things lab week, Thanksgiving, um, America says can be considered. We think that's a good time to ship the network upgrade then. Um, and thanks to the field infra team, Mark, uh, Marcus and Lace, we were able to have more bootstrap nodes in other implementations, which increases the resilience of critical network service. And since are more decentralized and we have more diverse client across the network and the, yes consensus for as oh sorry i think that's from uh the past couple quarters yes we have been closely monitoring the chain robustness and like security making sure we are not hitting any chain bandwidth by implementing all these monitoring toolings uh within the lotus team uh 
with that being said, even though there's a lot of progress as always, however, there's also a lot of work to be done as always. So some like challenges and opportunities. Yes, a lot of good conversation uh, come out of the Fall Queen Dev Summit. And I think all the track leads are expected to be summarized, the takeaway and next steps in the upcoming Fall Queen blog post. So keep an eye on that. We'll be linking the public recording in the blog post as well. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities to find there, for example, fast finality for the Fall Queen Network, enable direct data onboarding so that start provider and client can put data onto the network more easily with a more cost efficient way. We need better CDN data onboarding pipeline, reduce Fall Queen Plus abusement, increasing the amount of Fall Queen Plus allocator. Um, and uh, we want more flexible sector commitment content, a lot of protocol opportunities over there. Uh, so stay tuned on the upcoming you know, uh, newsletters to follow along and let us know if you want to contribute to that. Uh, that being said, as mentioned by the P2P and the IPFS teams, uh, as PL Go and PLN in general is moving towards more uh, net network native development teams, uh, there are active consideration for Falcon Blue team to continue uh, play a uh, important uh, role in the file queen development to empowering more teams in the whole ecosystem to build and contribute uh, towards file queen in general and we are working closely with like P PL Go or like uh, file queen foundations and potential other sources in the ecosystem to uh, support and fund the work this blue team may may be performing uh, a lot more to come in um, over the next couple of weeks, and we are hoping to have more active conversation with anyone that's interested in developing Fall Queen protocol with us in Lab Week. Uh, and if you have any questions, do let us know. Um, and, and I think that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Some great highlights. And moving on to our spotlights, starting with CryptoNet. Yep. So we basically put together five years of work on Filecoin proofs um, and made it publicly available. The result is this technical report on Filecoin proof of useful space. Um, many people, especially from the ecosystem and the, uh, and academics, ask for uh, details of Filecoin proofs, how Filecoin works, and so on. And this should be basically the document that they should be referring to. What can you find there? Formal definition of proof of space the persistent and useful space notions that we use in Filecoin, the details of SDR construction and the security proof, and also some introductory material to the Filecoin protocol with the complete description of how SDR is used in Filecoin and especially its sub-protocols, which are Poreb, Windopost, and Windypost. You find the full report linked in the slide, and there is much more you can learn about proof of space and proof of useful space in proofofspace.org um, website. Awesome. Thank you, Luca. Eric, tell us more about DRAND. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Molly. Um, so a few League of Entropy updates uh, where you've onboarded Mistin Labs, creators of the SUI or SUI protocol, depending on uh, what side of the Atlantic you live on, and Dia Data as well, which is a um, an Oracle service uh, based in Germany. Uh, so they're on testnet and we're getting them spun up for our production mainnet. Um, on the product development side, uh, we've been collaborating very closely with the Crypto Econ Lab team and made uh, several significant breakthroughs this week, uh, looking at different use cases uh, and how we might bring that to market. So some exciting announcements coming up there as well. Um, the SSV network is our first paying customer outside of our normal uh, work that we do with the League of Entropy uh, as a public good. And so we're very excited about that. They recently awarded us a grant. And so we've got some work underway there to help them with uh, DKG coordination efforts. Uh, we've completed all of our code walkthrough videos. So those are uploaded and available for everyone. Uh, we've also opened up a new YouTube channel uh, so that we can make those more broadly available on top of the, the channels that we normally distribute through. Um, we are working on the creation of a League of Entropy Foundation. So there's some in very, very early work going on there. Uh, working through the Open Impact Foundation, and so we hope that uh, we hope to have more to announce there next month. Um, and we've also been awarded a Filecoin Foundation grant for fuzzing DRAND. For those of you that don't know what fuzzing is, it's basically looking for security holes and that sort of thing. So um, this is something we've wanted to do for a long time now, and we're very pleased to be able to do it uh, thanks to the Filecoin Foundation. 
Uh, let's see. KPIs are awesome. Uh, we got 4 billion requests in the last 30 days, so that's pretty cool. And we have links to our Grafana dashboard for more details there. And upcoming, we look forward to seeing everyone in Istanbul for the uh, League of Entropy Summit, uh, which is part of the broader set of events that uh, PL is putting on there, and in, in addition to all our partners. Um, and we are moving ahead very vigorously with our nucleation plans. So we were recently accepted into a uh, founders cohort from the Washington Technology Industry Association uh, based here in Seattle, Washington, by virtue of my geographic location. Uh, but we also have some other uh, some other founders events that we're applying to in different geographies. And so we're very excited about making a successful transition. So if any any questions about any of that, feel free to ping me on Slack. Otherwise, uh, I'll hand off to our next presenter. Awesome. Lots of roadmap updates, too. Alex, tell us more about Saturn and Metaplex. Got some great news on the Saturn front. So the weather is great here on the planet. Um, so Saturn closed um, its uh, one of its first private beta customers with Metaplex. Um, we completed the integration and uh, Saturn is already serving the NFT metadata for the Metaplex Creator Studio on production. So whoever goes there can actually see the service worker um, uh, serving the assets directly from our network. Um, apart from that, we have improved the P50 TTFB globally to sub 70 milliseconds, which is pretty great. Um, for a content um, addressed uh, delivery network. And we have actually also improved and strengthened um, the network um, on the fraud and multi-node prevention side. Uh, so if you see that there's less nodes on the center network, that's the better nodes now. Um, so what's next? Um, we are going to launch the private beta customer portal in November in um, uh, Istanbul, hopefully and um, currently targeting to onboard new customers onto Saturn. So whoever is interested, please contact us. Um, and apart from that, performance, 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 and customer tooling. That's all from my side. Awesome. Well, uh, if folks want to, to get involved, they can go and check out the, the Metaplex example and then reach out for sure. Um, Ayush, tell us about NV21. Can do. Uh, so it's going to be pretty quick. This is uh, fairly similar to the update that uh, I think I presented in the previous, uh, in last month's uh, All Hands, but basically the NV21 scope is unchanged from then. Uh, synthetic pull rep is perhaps the big one to call out, uh, a lighter weight proof of replication. Uh, but in addition to that, there's some uh, fibs that harden uh, various aspects of the FBM, uh, the ability for storage providers to move partitions between deadlines, and just a whole bunch of protocol bug fixes. This is a cleanup as well as juicy new features upgrade. Uh, I do have a timeline update. Uh, we were targeting a mainnet update of November 9th. Uh, and I think I called out in the previous week, uh, uh, last week, uh, last month, sorry, that uh, that had a little bit of risk just because of proximity to Lab Week and American Thanksgiving. Uh, so we decided to play it safe and update uh, the mainnet upgrade date to November 28th without actually changing the date for any of our releases. So everything is coming out on time. Folks will just have an extra two weeks to update to the software. Uh, speaking of updates, so the calibration test net updated exactly four hours ago. Uh, as Jennifer mentioned, we've already found one bug uh, that we're actively working on fixing in partnership with the Venus team. Uh, I think uh, one of our collaborators just reported a second one, and I'm sure there'll be more. Uh, this is good. Uh, this is the phase of uh, the testing process where we want these to be coming out uh, so that we can fix them and uh, have it all handled well before that date of November 28th. So call for help here, which is anyone who's interested, please run Lotus either 124 or 125 as RCs. Uh, on the calibration test network and report any issues uh, and uh, yell if you notice anything wrong because we will actively fix them uh, in advance of the actual upgrade. That's all. Thanks, Ayush. Birdie, give us the Sentinel update. Cool. Uh, thanks, Monk. Um, so just want to announce the new feature uh, support added in Lily to, mo to monitor the open blocks um, in real time. So this will help us monitor the Valpoint uh, network help uh, much, much, much better, uh, especially during the network upgrade. Uh, and one is now, announcement is that we are starting to turn off public access to our data sets and as well as the archival snapshot and make it appeal access only. And soon you will be private. Uh, so let, let us know if uh, you need uh, you'll be impacted and need uh, the continuous access. Thanks. Ori, tell us about Station. Great. Thank you, Molly. Um, so a friendly reminder of what is Station. So uh, Station's a new network. Um, uh, it's in beta stages, so we're early in development, where you can deploy your code to a global decentralized worker network running on home computers. So the first module um, is in the retrieval space for the Falcon network, so it's a storage provider retrieval checker we're calling Spark that's working to basically decentralize um, 
and incentivize retrieval checking for the Fopco network. So we're super excited for launching payments to go live at Lab Week. So we have a handful of nodes running, which have been really great, um, and downloads. Um, and that will now become our in, incentives will go live um, in Istanbul. So um, there may even be some perks for being an early adopter. So go ahead and follow the QR code that's in the top right and download station today. Um, wink, wink. Um, and so what's next? What's on the horizon? Beyond Spark, we're exploring basically further opportunities for our next modules um, in network and web analytics or potentially in um, like decentralized function as a service type of markets. Um, you can follow us at those links there. Another sort of thing that we're exploring as well is on the long term, uh, finding ways to productize the underlying smart contracts and services that actually pay the node operators. So go ahead, download station, follow that QR code in the top right, or go to fill station. Um, and you can find the domain there. And thank you so much. Exciting. Um, I feel like I'm one of the top station users. So happy to, to hear that more will be joining me. All right, Peter, tell us about IPDX. Yeah, so I'm really excited to unveil our evolution from a team we've, we've been IP stewards, known as IPDX, to a full service powerhouse serving all of PLM and even beyond uh, IPDX Go. <laughs> uh, but our journey doesn't stop at a name change. And uh, yeah, I just want to uh, go through a couple of recent updates that showcase what we're all about. Uh, so recently we released Unified CI 2.0. Uh, it greatly simplifies the, the setup and introduces customization options, uh, which make it a breeze to tailor uh, CI exactly to client's needs. Uh, we've also proposed uh, how to cut the built-in actor CI time in half uh, by harnessing the potential of our managed self-hosted GitHub Actions runners. And to make it even better, we're uh, soon will be releasing accompanying data on the efficiency gains and the costs of using those runners. And that's made possibly by our exclusive GitHub observability tooling. Uh, we are also leading the effort to clean up Filecoin project to GitHub organization, uh, where GitHub management is our assistance in pinpointing inactive repos members and collaborators. Uh, we're uh, also about to introduce the gateway conformance testing dashboard to showcase the status of gateways within our network. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned for all of that, uh, as, well, as well as, for example, for the introduction of Windows and FreeBSD runners and many, many more things that improve developer experience. And because this is just a small sample of what we've been up to, and we are all about enhancing the entire developer experience and uh, the way we think about IPDX Go is its developer experience as a service uh, that we want to provide. And we are on the lookout for new collaborations and we're ready to boost anyone's <laughs> development journey with our suits of tools and our, well, quite high expertise at this point. Uh, our doors, doors are wide open. And uh, in particular, we are also currently preparing a comprehensive offer for other nucleating teams. And because we want to do whatever we can to ensure that we all succeed post nucleation And we are already in discussion with uh, some of the leaders from initiatives like Saturn or Data Onboarding, but we'll be reaching out to many, many more people. Uh, but also please consider this an open invitation and do please reach out to us uh, if you want to, to start the conversation proactively. We are on Slack, email, uh, we set up Calendly, uh, we can't wait to talk, uh, and yeah, we are also going to be there at Lab Week, uh, so hopefully see you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. Uh, I know it's been a huge step up for all teams that have been benefiting from your uh, expertise and fantastic tooling for GitHub management, so excited to see more groups get to take, take, uh, take benefits. Thanks. Over to David for Lilypad. Hey, everyone. Um, so the big announcement was uh, what we did at uh, Filecoin, or excuse me, uh, PhilDev in Iceland. Uh, we now have our brand new testnet. Uh, that is the second testnet uh, that we have uh, launched, uh, now ported over to Go from Python, what it was originally. Um, we participated in the open data hack where we had uh, more than 20 submissions um, and uh, end user modules contributed back to the network and so on. 
Uh, for those that, uh, you know, it, you may have heard the term Bravo and Lilypad, these are all like basically our uh, trustless distributed compute networks. Uh, you know, we're, we're initially looking at doing, focusing on AI and ML, but really it's just about anything you'd like to execute in a decentralized, uh, verifiable way. Uh, we also have a brand new DEX uh, developer experience for uh, contributing your own modules. So come by and, and participate. Uh, and we have lots of places for you to plug in. Uh, again, it's all testnet, but we would love your feedback, ways to contribute, ways to contribute your own stuff. Uh, join us in the Slack, look at our logs and our, excuse me, our uh, docs and so on, um, because we would love to get your feedback and build towards uh, something really awesome happening at Lab Week. Um, stay tuned. Woot woot. We'd love to see some people um, add some user contributed modules, can get even more awesome uh, data preparation uh, added to our existing data preparation module, which would be great. Awesome. Okay, with that, we're jumping into deep dives. Um, and I know we have another one that was added in flight. So we'll do a quick deep dive on PhilDev Summit and then also a quick one on Lab Week, which I know a lot of groups mentioned and folks are excited about. So Cool. So a quick starting with the Phil Dev Summit. Quick look back. We had Phil Dev Summits one and two, um, all uh, happening in the month of September. It was an exciting and busy month. Um, first showed up in Singapore and got to engage our fantastic Asia community, co-located with Token 2049, um, and then round two in Iceland, um, perfectly positioned on the delineation of the North America and European continents um, to bring together a, a broader community of folks um, from storage providers, clients, protocol devs, and beyond. Um, so with that, share a quick recap video. It was an awesome gathering. Okay, there we go. Um, we got Falcon together as a team of teams. It was really fantastic to see people um, cross-connecting with lots of folks they hadn't met before or definitely don't get to talk to on a day-to-day -day basis um, to share a lot of information um, and have deeper dive discussions about um, new tools or improvements that cross different domains and silos. Um, and so lots of knowledge sharing, lots of uh, kind of cross-coordination of topics. Um, we did a lot of working together. The, this, there was uh, deeper dives and workshops on um, different protocol changes um, from FVM to SP tooling, um, to scaling data onboarding, to making Phil Plus better, to um, you know the improvements to kind of po reps and network scalability. So lots of deep dive conversations um, and kind of protocol uh, improvements being discussed. Um, lots of knowledge sharing. Um, and making sure that we're kind of aligning our, our perspectives and understandings on how we can be upgrading uh, the, the Filecoin core protocol and then lots of the tooling and capabilities in the network. Um, also talked a lot about new potential FIPS, um, network challenges that we wanna be solving um, and upgrade trajectories uh, that we think are pretty exciting for driving the, the value and capabilities of Filecoin. Um, we built a lot of momentum. Um, we have a very, very early Falcon community roadmap. We need to keep iterating on this to make it more um, effective, but we're we're working on writing summaries and recaps of every different track um, so that even if you weren't there in person or you weren't able to attend that track, you're able to get a deeper dive view into the learnings and key takeaways um, and get a, a an overall synthesized picture of um, how Filecoin is getting better and better. Um, and last but not least, we grew as a community massively um, between the two uh, PhilDev summits. We had six days of content, 18 tracks, 120 speakers, and 200 plus attendees, I think 220 plus attendees. So it was awesome. It was a, a great uh, gathering for the Falcon community, and we absolutely want to do more and keep growing our, our connections here. So um, if you're excited about potentially running your own PhilDev summit, maybe in conjunction with another event, 
please get in touch. I'm happy to share all of all of the knowledge uh, related to putting this sort of event on um, and maybe partner to, to help others um, bring together the protocol dev community along with many other involved participants in the Falcoin ecosystem. So if you missed it, definitely do check out the recordings. More and more are being added every day as uh, speakers approve their videos. Um, so we have a whole chunk of content that is um, available here. Uh, we'll be trying to highlight some of the um, you know, most uh, high watched videos uh, in some of the blog posts, but you can already dive in and start watching everything you missed and do highly recommend it because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of really important and valuable nuggets. So um, with that, and I'll jump out and in again for you and would love to. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Uh, so that week is coming. Uh, this is a, the large yearly conference for the entire PL network. Um, already uh, there's about, you know, on the order of 250 to, to 600 teams, depending on how you count and how, how you figure out the closeness to uh, to the network. Lots of teams are coming to, to Lab Week, uh, spanning many different industries, many different um, uh, communities and uh, networks bringing us together. Lab Week, uh, this is a, a view into, you know, some of the uh, teams uh, across the community. Uh, here's, you know, a, lots of different uh, topic areas from, you know, zero knowledge proofs, uh, AI and blockchains, blockchain security, uh, deep in networks, gaming, metaverse, and so on. Next slide. Uh, decentralized identity, public goods funding, social networking, compute, DSI, uh, consensus scalability, DeFi and FinTech, developer tooling, blockchain infrastructure, and much more. Uh, there's probably even teams here that are not uh, reflected on this map. If you did not see your team's logo on there, uh, reach out to the LabWeek team and get it get it added. Um, over time, maybe that map will become like a public resource that you know we keep updated. Uh, LabWeek is going to be in beautiful Istanbul. Um, we're organizing LabWeek in connection with DevConnect. Uh, so DevConnect is also um, a large event uh, in the Ethereum community that's happening. Uh, in Istanbul as well, the same week, uh, and we're in close touch with that group as well as they're also looking through the the same uh, set of problems. Um, so uh, here's a like I mentioned before, there, there's a huge packed schedule. Uh, there's a lot uh, going on. Um, uh, you can uh, there's lots of teams coming to the uh, to the network. Um, there's you know many more events that sort of like fall off the page uh, here. Uh, make sure you check out uh, the schedule. Uh, and optimize your, your time. It will be a huge moment for a lot of the community coming together. Uh, next slide. And here you can see uh, a slice of the DevConnect schedule as well. Uh, a lot of the events are going to end up being you know, like cross-posted between the two schedules. Um, and uh, you know, definitely make sure that if you're hosting an event that is very relevant to uh, the uh, Ethereum community, make sure that it gets posted here, uh, here in the DevConnect schedule as well. Um, if you're hosting an event uh, that is uh, more for uh, the PL network or for the Paco network or, or and so on, uh, then optimize for the lab week, lab week schedule. Uh, next. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to participate. There'll be lots of spaces, lots of um, uh, ways to connect uh, with folks. Uh, we're also creating, uh, uh, the, the community is kind of organizing a lot of social gatherings. So um, we are starting to see a lot of um, uh, social events uh, emerging as well. Uh, and teams will have some boot space in, in various spots. Uh, you can uh, contact the LabWeek team to, uh, if, if you're interested in like having a booth for your team or uh, in organizing it or attending social events and whatnot. Um, next. Uh, there's also a room block. Uh, you can reach out to LabWeek23 at protocol.ai uh, if you're interested in, in getting access to that room block. Because of the huge conflict in, in Israel and Palestine, um, it, there's a lot of protests in uh, surrounding countries, everyone in the world, but but especially surrounding countries. Uh, so there have been some uh, amount of protests in, in Istanbul. Um, we're at the moment monitoring the situation to make sure that um, Lab Week uh, is a good, safe event uh, for everybody. Uh, huge reminder here for everybody that Lab Week is optional. So uh, you know, all teams, uh, you individually and, and teams should decide whether or not you want to um, want to go to Lab Week. Um, we are adjusting some of the the um, the uh, the way in which we host the events, uh, just given this, to to make sure that uh, we optimize for safety. And we are monitoring the situation. So if things escalate, uh, or for example, if Turkey gets involved in the conflict, um, then then likely we will uh, have to pivot the event. Uh, thank you. And I think that's it. So see you. Uh, see you soon.